It's a complete nightmare. <laughs> um, actually, what 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 I what I what I do is that I, when it comes to organising a gig or rehearsal or something, I actually just I look after the rhythm section, and Paul Williamson, the trumpet player, he looks after the horns. I think the only original horn player of the footage he shot was Ian. Everyone else had depped out. So Henry Mars from the Nightcat um, just came to me one day and said we'd really like to start having like big bands at the Nightcat on Sundays and uh, I really wanted to uh, learn about playing and play in, in a Latin band so I yeah. thought hey how about we make it a, a Latin band. Um, Bernard who was managing the Continental he suggested um, un grupo de cabrones which is means which literally means a group of bastards so we sort of thought oh yeah that's good so we changed it to that and then after the band sort of started becoming reasonably well known especially in the Latin community we sort of found out that all the Latin guys just call it just call it Los Cabrones, the Cabrones. So we kind of shortened it because it was just too long and long-winded. So basically, it's the bastards. <laughs> Invited to go and play with some guys by the saxophone player named Tim Reese, who was out here with the Stones, um, and we did some playing here. So I went over uh, to do some gigs with him, and we just decided that we'd record. And I had some tunes and stuff, and we ended up recording all of the tunes that I brought at this session. And um, we, you know, we were really, really happy with how things went. And so the day before I left, Tim had organised these interviews with different record labels and stuff. And uh, we just went around New York meeting with different people. And there was this one guy who really dug the record and really liked what we were doing and just agreed to put it out. And sort of things just went on from there. Uh, Vada's been together for about three years now. It's the people that play in it, like Carlo and Eamon. And Rory, we all went to VCAS together and we just, we were playing together all through high school and when we graduated we just continued playing together and eventually I started writing music for it and um, it is what it is now. Well, I was born in Papua New Guinea and my mother is Papua New, from Papua New Guinea um, and my dad was born in Australia but his heritage is a Jewish heritage. and. Um, my mum's father was Chinese as well, so... Um, well, I mean, other than the physical things, like not being able to see and the sun and stuff, which aren't really such a big deal for me because I'm used to it and it's just how I know, I, I know how to live like that. Um, I guess in some ways you do get a bit of a cultural crisis because you don't necessarily... It's not that you don't fit in, but growing up in a Chinese... Papua and, you know, culture and in Moresby being like the only white kid you do feel so out of the circle in some ways and restricted by, you know, things I could do like I couldn't run around with the other kids and stuff like that so you do get a bit isolated but on the other side, 
side of things because I couldn't run around. I had to spend all day in the kitchen with all the women cooking, so I know how to cook. <laughs> Over 60 people booked for the gig in the last year and a half. Or I, I just put Julian Wilson Trio on the poster because it was going to be a trio each week. Yeah. But then there's about 12 names on that poster. Yeah. And uh, I've got to get another one done. Just add another 50 names to it, I think. Uh, I'm, uh, I'd be surprised if there's another scene like this in the world, really. It's, I'm sure there's some places with happening, happening scenes, but most of the big cities don't seem to have a lot of music. Sydney's a fine example where there's heaps of great players around but there's only a few gigs and they're kind of spread out. You, um, Fitzroy's sort of a town into itself in a way. You know, when there's somebody, you walk out of one venue and you can hear the band from the next one already, you can go and walk into four places in what, three blocks between Bar Oak and the Cape Lounge yeah. and see a live band in each one without paying any money for it, which is pretty astounding really in any city in the world. Yeah. And, and generally, the standard of it's pretty good. People are really into. Sp I think people have got a freedom here to to go straight to the point rather than having to prove that they can do everything else first.